Hello guys, welcome back to another video of my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the MacBook Air M1 and what has Apple done to the to it and why it's amazing. Let's begin. Let's begin. Um, okay, so the Apple M1. What is the Apple M1? It's Apple's own chip for Macs. So it's their first own chip for Macs. Apple has been making chips for iPhones and iPads and Apple Watches. Now finally, they brought the power to the Mac, the potential of their chips to the Mac, and they called it the Apple M1. So the Apple M1 was built on an ARM architecture, which is basically taking all the components of the computer and adding up all the together to make the M1. I think it's called the x86 architecture or the x64 architecture in the Intel laptops. They're all spread out basically, all the components are spread out. Apple's M1 is combined. All the components are in one piece of block and like that it just makes it work better, I guess. And it's really damn better than Intel chips because it's way more powerful and it's way more energy efficient. Now let's start first of all with the display of the MacBook Air. So the display of the MacBook Air it's an IPS panel with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. It's a retina display with P3 col color gamut so you can edit some photos and have videos with some good color collection. It's an okay display, 400 nits, not the brightest. MacBook Pros have brighter displays, but it's okay. Also, Apple has updated the st mics. They're now studio quality, like in the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Now, I'm pretty sure they're not exactly the ones, but they're close to it, like they're way better than before. So the microphones are better, which is important in the times we live right now. And because of the new chip, the webcam quality has been improved a bit. Uh, so even though it's still 720p, uh, the chips does help out a bit to make the webcam quality a bit better. So this is a quality of the, this is a test of the mic microphone quality and the webcam quality on the MacBook Air M1. To me, it does seem like it's a bit better than the one in the MacBook Pro. It's definitely still 720p, but um, it does a better job of, you know, smoothing out those details and all that stuff. It does a better job of the details than the Mac one in the MacBook Pro. So, yeah, even though it's 720p, still a great webcam, I would say. And the microphone quality, you could check that out for yourself. Now, let's talk about the keyboard. The keyboard is the, still the same Magic Keyboard where we are used to now, and it's brilliant. So I've been using the Magic Keyboard on my MacBook Pro. It hasn't failed, and I just like it. It's a nice typing experience. The travel is brilliant. It's not too loud like butterfly keys, and it'll, it's reliable. It will last you long. So yeah, Magic Keyboard, I like it. So people prefer butterfly, but Magic Keyboard, um, I think I find it better for myself. Now, interesting thing about the keyboard, Apple has actually updated the function keys and they put a globe key in their function key. So now that changes languages uh, if you press on it. But you, of course, you can reconfigure that if you don't like that. But I kind of find it very, very useful and very, very good to use. So yeah, I just like pressing that button and changes languages. I find it very, very uh, uh, useful and easy to use basically now the function keys apple has a do not disturb dictation to the function keys and i think that's pretty much it they also added the globe key of course and that's all the differences in the keyboard i kind of find the function keys the new function keys not as useful as they were before like i'm missing some of my functions like open the um app launcher so I'm pressing, there's none of that. You're gonna have to use the trackpad to do that. And I don't know, I just pr prefer pressing a button to open the app launcher or the launch pad. But it's just a little thing. You can just use the trackpad. But I do, as I said, I do like the fact you can change languages using the function key. It's so useful to me, I don't know why. I've assigned it to my MacBook Pro. Yeah, it's very good to use. Let's now talk about the trackpad. So it's still the same force touch trackpad we're used to now. It's a great trackpad. I love force touch. You can open up previews of files or you can search up a word. So you can, or you can preview websites. So if you pref, uh, pr force touch on a link, it will preview that website. So for example, I can 
force touch the word buy and it shows me the link. Uh, force, I find force touch very useful. Overall, it's a good track, but I, I, it's silent and the, it's very big. So you have a lot of space. It's not as big on the pros, but still it's big to use. It's very good to use. Uh, so you have a lot of room to play with. Let's talk about one of probably the most important aspects of the video, the performance. It's and I can all I can say is very very powerful. The multi core score is about seven thousand, and the uh, single core is about one thousand seven hundred. I think it's a very powerful computer, I must say. I have been doing gaming and video editing on it, testing it out, and I must say it's brilliant to use. To be honest, I prefer it way more than my MacBook Pro because it's fanless, no fan noise. I mean, I understand it's a small thing, like. It's not that important, but still, it's just editing on it was very, very a cool experience because no fan, it's not hot. Like when you touch it, it's like warm, but not hot to your touch. So it's not, when you use it on your knees, it's not burning your knees. So yeah, using this computer was a joy to use when playing games and video editing. And finally, we're getting Macs that are actually able to run games with no problems. A MacBook Air that can edit video. It's good for people who buy these because uh, peop a lot of people will buy these laptops and they will have the perf access to the performance when they'll need it and they need to do some heavy tasks. And Apple, I think, did a really smart move on the Apple M1. Let's talk about the battery life. Another important aspect. It's again, it's awesome. So if you're doing work, you can just take this laptop and use it about depends how much you use it like if you're doing light tasks you probably can use about nine hours in a day with no charger needed it is that good and now if you're gonna use it even more lighter it'll probably last you for about one or two even maybe three days the battery life if you're gonna use me heavily it might last you about nine hours or seven hours something like that i'm guessing um i haven't been doing tests on battery life much but as I've been using the laptop, I've noticed that, yeah, battery life is amazing. It only weighs like 2%, 3%, 4%, depends on how heavy you're doing the task. So video editing, how much clips you're playing with and all that. Obviously, the more clips, the more render, the more battery life is going to be wasted. But it's not as bad as the Intel Max. The Intel Max will already probably die by that time. So, yeah, this is a very powerful computer with a very good battery life to suit it. Battery life, awesome. Let's talk about the speakers. So it's the same basically as Apple had in there probably last year MacBook. I'm pretty sure they didn't improve it, but I'm not sure. They're not as good as on the MacBook Pros, but they're good, uh, they're good enough speakers uh, for you to be able to listen to something or to use it as your, you know, movie, watch to watch a movie they're good enough you get dual speakers uh yeah they're pretty good now let's talk about i didn't talk about design for some reason let's talk about the design macbook air to be honest hasn't been really my favorite laptop i prefer the pro because of its squarish design i don't really like the try i don't know how wedged shape or triangular design of the macbook air but as i'm kind of i don't as i'm kind of uh I don't know, I'm kind of getting used to it. It makes the laptop lighter, although you do lose some ports. So my MacBook Pro has four ports, this has two, but it's um, I can live with that. Uh, but I'm speaking about ports, it has Thunderbolt 4 USB 4 ports, and they are two, two of them are USB-C. And you have a headphone jack. Yeah, the design, it's okay. I'm, kinda, I'm not really, um, obviously people have their own opinions, whether they like this design or not. I'm kind of not sure if I like it. I prefer, the, I still kind of prefer the design of the MacBook Pros, a squarish design, but it's not bad. It's not a bad design because uh, everyone loves a MacBook Air. And yeah, so Apple's M1 MacBook Air, a very, really good laptop. I li love it. And obviously they have also made the MacBook Pro 13 inch, the base model as the M1 and the Mac mini. So people will have more choices. If you need a bit more, a power in in long term use you will get the macbook pro because it has a fan if you want a desktop mac mini and if you want a 
a laptop for everyone, the cheapest laptop you can get, MacBook Air. I absolutely recommend it. It's a great laptop to use. Now, I would recommend also to wait because we might get some new Macs in March. I don't know if the rumors are right. I don't know if I'm right. I would recommend to wait for now. But if you can't wait, yeah, get the MacBook Air. It's an amazing laptop for, and I think also a lot of people, they'll have the power, they'll have the battery life. Amazing laptop for the price. A bit too steep, $1,000 starting price, but I think for $1,000 with this performance and this battery life and this build quality, it's an amazing laptop. And I think it's a absolute a deal breaker compared to some other Windows laptops at this price range. Uh, but yeah, MacBook Air, absolute uh, thumbs up. You've done it well, Apple. They've done the right thing. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.